Holy smokes, guys. Have you seen this new 4K satellite imagery in the Smart Fishing Spots app? It is next level. It makes Google satellite maps look like a complete joke. I can't even use them anymore after seeing this. It's, it's probably why some of these companies are charging hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to get the same access to be able to see your fishing spots in this 4K level. It lets you see all kinds of new hidden areas, new potholes, new seagrass, new oyster bars, stuff that you would never, ever see on a normal Google Google satellite map. The best news is with us, it's completely complimentary. It is, yes, it's completely free for our members. So if you're a current Insider member, go check this out. It's in the toggle area where you'll now be able to see a little place where you can see obviously oyster bars, seagrass, you've got being Google, and now you've got this 4K imagery. And if you're not a member, what the heck are you waiting on? So I'm going to grab you by the hand and show you exactly where to find new fishing spots every single week, because that's what we do. Come and join us. It's Salt saltstrong.com and the insider club 35,000 plus members and new ones joining every single hour see you inside fishing, it's in my soul. welcome to the salt strong podcast disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it prepare to laugh Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, Like Diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, Like Diamonds, here at Salt Strong headquarters today. What's up, Richard? We got Richard over here doing some editing. We just got off the water. There's Matt and Yankees in the pool right now. We got Wyatt, who's going to be the co-host with the most. This is a real cute hat. Hey. What's going on, folks? And uh, ooh, Wyatt's got some really cool drone uh, footage here. And we're talking about redfish on the move. Trends are changing. What's up there, Lukey? Yeah. He's getting a little view of uh, the area. Tony just came in from a trip. Got some uh, nice reds. And then uh, I'll continue to kind of give you guys the tour here. It's a beautiful house we've rented in Arapica, Florida. We've got a pool way back over that way just had a bunch of really awesome content creators from youtube here also and uh the last day they're here we started really dialing in the redfish because they were acting a little bit different which is the main focus point of this podcast so wyatt give us in a general sentence layman's terms what's happening so we're approaching the end of summer we're seeing with redfish they're not really following the it's hot trends anymore. See a lot of redfish that fall into these patterns of adjusting to the temperature, the heat of summer. We're not really doing that anymore. We're seeing a lot of redfish moving into almost fall trends. So we're having to adjust to what's going on there. So what does that mean for the average person? So we've, in this, I, let's, let's talk about that. In summertime, what happens with redfish? What are we, in general, in most places? Because you're in Texas, you're here in Florida, it's kind of similar. Redfish is redfish is redfish. What is happening in summer? And let's talk about what's happening in fall. Yeah. So what we see in summertime is redfish are looking for DO2. They're looking for cooler water. Uh, DO2 is essential for reds. And as you have higher water temperature, you lose DO2. So you're looking for windblown shorelines. You're looking for redfish shallow really early in the mornings. And as it gets hotter later in the day, they're going to move deeper. So that's really a, a quick summary of, of, uh, of summer. As we get into fall, we see the inverse. They're not really concerned with DO2 because the water levels are getting a little bit cooler. Uh, they become a little bit more comfortable. And we see them instead starting deeper early in the day and they start to move shallow and they feed up in the shallows for most of the day, which is great for us anglers. Uh, we don't have to wake up super early in the morning and we can stay on a redfish bite a lot later into the day. So it's really just focused on food. And that's what we saw with a lot of the redfish as we've been out here in Arapica is these fish are just keyed in on those spots where it's high congregations of bait. In fact, this morning we were out fishing in front of uh, some creek outflow areas that were really shallow not really good area to be fishing in summer, but as we're moving out of summer trends, we're seeing a lot more fish in these types of spots. So it's uh, it, it's just changing trends, looking for a lot more bait, bait highways almost, uh, knowing where redfish are gonna feed, uh, and, and using a lot of the trends that we're seeing with smart fishing spots as, as that algorithm changes over, we're using it to really see and predict where these fish are going to be moving as we get a little bit more into fall. I think that's why everyone loves redfish in the fall, right? That's the most, probably the most celebrated time. You've got 
a lot of tournaments going on for Redfish. You got sight casting. They're going up super shallow. Even the ones that Matt and I were into yesterday, I mean, they were all on less than a foot of water, which is really neat because you can get sight casting opportunities. And uh, it uh, it's much more enjoyable than trying to find them in deeper waters. So what do you got here? Some drone flow today? Yeah. So I want to show you guys that I was talking about that outflow area. So you can see all this marsh up in here and Really, summertime. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Oh, yeah. Summertime, you're not going to see a lot of redfish up in this really shallow stuff uh, during the middle of the day. You know, you might get them up in there at night or early morning, maybe late in the evening. But fish don't want to get up in these shallow ponds where there's no water movement, there's no wind, nothing to increase the level of DO2. But, and, and you can see there was no wind out here uh, on the, uh, this morning. Yeah. But, as we get a little bit more into fall, the temperatures are a little bit cooler. We had what, Richard, maybe 70s? Uh, it was like upper 70s, maybe low 80s. I mean, it was cool enough for those fish. And we heard them last night feeding up in here. And we had high tides, you know, throughout the night. No, oh yeah, that, we could hear them back in these ponds, you know, slurping mullet. And we knew this morning with the lower tides, these fish weren't going to be concerned about being up shallow on those banks. And they were going to be where that bait was coming out of. So you can see there's a little outflow point right over here. And uh, all we did was we fished in this cove and uh, we actually picked up some some really nice fish. We, we moved up uh, to another similar area. Just again, shallow, lots of bait over Is here. Sawgrass there? Yeah, a lot of sawgrass uh, in the area that we're fishing. Um, if you're fishing in kind of flat zones, Luke's gonna hook up here in a second, but if you're fishing in flat zones, it's even just regular shorelines. There doesn't have to be grass there. It's all about just getting really shallow. Here, let me turn the brightness up. You'll see Luke hook up right down over here in a second. He, we're just fishing the 2.0 paddle tails around a bunch of smaller mullet. That's another thing is the bait size is gonna change here in a little bit. Actually, we did catch one on bombers last night. Um, look at that, going wild right there. Oh dang, that's a nice red. Oh yeah, we were getting on some really good ones this morning. In fact, let me see if I've got some pictures of some of these red fish. There's one that we picked up this morning. Yeah. 2.0 paddle tail, uh, really cool spots on this guy on his tail. But you'll see them getting this color. I mean, they're they're eating everything that they can in these marshes. They're feeding. They're feeding right now to just increase their fat stores as we get into fall. They know that they need to eat as much as possible uh, before we get into winter. They need to have whatever reserves they can because there's going to be these northerns that blow in in winter that they can't get out and feed. So the best thing they can do right now in the fall when they don't have to worry about getting away from the heat or hiding from the cold uh, is just feed. So your biggest thing that you're looking for, what we were doing this morning was fishing those outflow points from those marshes uh, and those fish were just up there ready to feed. They didn't care about temperature, it was about getting a meal. If you're in the flats, be looking for those areas where mullet are moving on and off of those flats, entry exit points. Uh, this isn't exclusive to marshes. You're gonna see redfish in Texas, in Florida, Virginia, the Carolinas, everywhere as we get some cooler weather that's gonna come through. Northern winds, typically you're gonna see fish fall into these patterns. They're gonna get up as shallow as they can and feed. Uh, the redfish are really designed to feed in shallow water. You see a lot of times they're gonna be most active uh, tailing or sharking on those mullet. You're gonna see those big wakes in, in uh, less than two foot of water. A lot of times in just a foot of water. That's when redfish become most aggressive because that's what they're designed to do and hunt is in that really kind of shallow stuff. Prey can't get away from them as easily. So once you know where the bait is and you've got active fish uh, on that bait, you're gonna, you're gonna be in for a really good time because that's what those fish are trying to do right now is just increase those fat reserves uh, and, and get what they can before winter comes through. And false is such a good time because like you said, these fish are comfortable. They're, uh, and, and they get, they get fired up, dude. Uh, speaking of that, what are you doing differently in terms of lures and depth control? Be rigging it on. Yeah, so a lot of times what I will start out with in the fall is a topwater. Uh, we know these fish get really aggressive, especially if you have schooling fish, and you will see a lot more schools. In fact, I just ran into one in Texas a couple days before I came down here to Florida, uh, and they were super aggressive, all tied up, and one of the best lures you can throw when you see schooling redfish in the early morning, I've got a little trick. Stick your hand out as far as you can when the sun is coming up. Joe's sitting there laughing right now, but this is the, the hand puppet trick. And uh, if the sun is over your hand, it's time to switch to subsurface. But if it, you're able to cover the sun up with your hand, uh, you, you should be throwing a topwater because those fish, their eyes are fixed upwards uh, early in the morning. It's easier for them 
to see those profiles. And when they're in schools like that, they get really aggressive on top waters. So I'm gonna throw those top waters first thing in the morning. Once that bite dies down, the sun raises above my hand, I'm gonna switch to subsurface. And uh, right now, um, I'm still kind of favoring the 2.0, but I'm getting a lot more fish that are hitting bombers. And I have not had the bombers uh, be as productive in the shallows uh, for redfish in the summer because we've seen a lot of small shad and a lot of small pinfish uh, that are in the shallow summertime. Now, those types of prey items tend to dissipate as it starts getting colder. They either die off from the temperature, they're getting eaten from other predators, and you're really just left with some bigger mullet and some really big pinfish. That five inch size range imitates that really well. So that's when I get to just throwing bombers almost exclusively as we get into fall. And uh, by winter time, uh, really all that's left around, if I do choose to use a, uh, a bait fish presentation is gonna be that bomber. Uh, but in the fall, you're gonna see a, a you really just gotta look at what bait is in the area. I'm still favoring the 2.0, but I still have some situations where I'm gonna go to that bomber if I'm seeing bigger mullet. So far, it's been the 2.0 as we've seen small shad. In particular, you're talking about Slam Shady 2.0. Slam Shady 2.0, yeah. that that lure right there that's in that redfish's mouth. That was this morning current. It does not get any more current than that. Uh, we can see today at 10.43 a.m. That, uh, that was taken. So this is as current as it gets uh, these fish are really active on bait fish presentations right now we're going to see again the the bait size is going to get larger you're going to need to start throwing bigger paddle tails but just swap between the two and you'll be able to figure out what profile is going to work best for these fish and that's what i caught the my two on last night tony what were you catching them on uh this morning slam shade 2.0 get out of town get the heck out of town if you guys couldn't hear that tony said Slam Shady 2.0. Rich, what'd you catch your redfish on this morning? Slam Shady 2.0. It just worked. Even the, all the content creators. We have people from all over the place. We basically gave them every single one of our lures to go try out. And they're all like, oh, this 2.0 is pretty freaking awesome. And I know Angler Upper Brant is doing it in Pensacola. The guys in the Panhandle on the Alabama side are using it. Uh, Rich from, um, I'm blanking on his, uh, his channel. Fishaholic. Fishaholic, yeah, Rich. Uh, he's using it everywhere he goes. He's like, it's just so consistent. Now, a question, are you guys doing straight retrieve or are you popping it? So I, I tend to mix it up. In fact, I'm, I'm looking at a video here that I took in Texas earlier this week. Um, these red fish, it was again, the 2.0. We'll see here in a second. He's got that like all the way in the back of his mouth absolutely hammered it. And I was having to switch between retrieves. Uh, it seems like fish that are in cleaner water, like the more steady retrieve, there's not a whole lot of um, unnatural movement to that. But when you get into some dirtier water stuff that's a little bit murkier, and you need something that's going to catch the eye of those fish, that flash of white, I, I add more pops in there. I'll, I'll maybe as I'm rolling, either pause and give it one, two, or, you know, maybe I'll just completely bounce it all the way back to the boat. I still like to keep the, the bait fish presentation. But uh, if the water gets murkier, I'm adding way more pops to it. If it's clean, I'm just going to give it a straight retrieve, maybe mix some pauses in there to allow those fish to reaction strike on it. How? What are you using? We're in the time of year where there's just a lot of bait still present. So doing something a little bit different, you know, especially in that murkier water can really help. We're not mic'd up, so you're really going to have to yell here. All right. So, yeah, guys, a lot of times with this, this time of year, uh, there's just a lot of bait in the water. So having a little bit different retrieve can really help you out. So one of the things that I do a lot and have a lot of strikes on, I think Luke did this this morning, is just let it have a dead fall. So nice, easy, constant retrieve, something they can pick up on, especially with the 2.0 paddle tail. So it's got that vibration in it. So as soon as you let that thing fall, that immediately is something different to those fish and they'll key in on it. So that's been a really good trend uh, in my area. And we did it today out here too. Cool. And Richard's in Savannah, Georgia, if you guys are curious. So I, at least for me yesterday, I wasn't on the boat with you guys. You guys kicked me off to the paddle board. I was just using a Haas Helix weedless because I was it was super shallow. Same, you guys put on jig heads. What were you using? Yeah, so I've actually got. I pulled this out of my pocket earlier. This is uh, this is what we were using. 
Yeah, this is a Haas Helix. You can see that we had a loop knot tied on it. That's another really critical piece if you're gonna be fishing paddle tails. Uh, I'd recommend using a weedless presentation, uh, especially around grass and uh, even, even mud structure where there's oysters. Uh, you're gonna need a weedless presentation. This is that 1 8 ounce Haas Helix. I believe this is the 4 aught. Um, works really well for pretty much all the paddle tails that I use. I can put it on bombers, I can put it on 2.0s. You can still cast it really far. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And that wide gap hook, I love how wide the gap is for this size of hook because those redfish, when they hit it, I, I need a little bit more size uh, when they crunch it to make sure that it gets uh, behind those crushers that are a little bit tougher. Um, but that loop knot, really critical if you're going to be using paddle tails to give it a little bit more action. We have a bunch of videos we put out recently on how to tie the loop knots, like the number one knot for artificial lures. In fact, I think that's the title of the video, uh, but it just gives a lot more action to the lures. Works really well to quickly tie on these uh, Haas Helix hooks, uh, and it's gonna give your paddle tail a lot more life, and it's gonna help attract a lot more strikes. Cool, that's good stuff. Um, in terms of your tackle, are you going down, up? I saw a question today, guy's fishing shallow, lots of oyster bars, and he's worried about getting broken off because he's got light line in his opinion 10 he's like me hey, should i go up to 15 or 20 on my braid i i said no personally um unless you're fishing like docks and you really got to pull them out of structure are you still going 10 yeah so my main my main line is going to be 10 for sure if i'm using yeah, i was talking about main line sorry not not leader yep yeah for sure i'm gonna i'm gonna use 10 pound uh, there's no time in the year that just based on season i'm gonna change my main line application oh, look wise at this motley crew here our oh, pool guys. <laughs> he probably doesn't have pants on, so we'll have to. You got to pay a premium for that. <laughs> that's, that's subscription only. That's Matt and Pat. They've been doing underwater pool shots for the last hour and a half. The VIP uh, member. <laughs> 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 oh goodness yeah so mainline wise the only time i'm going to bump it up is going to be if i'm fishing around docks or if i'm fishing around like rocks like a jetty on the flats no i'd say even if you're fishing over oyster bars uh, or oyster reefs we've got a lot of those in texas that run a mile long i'm still going to use 10 pound mainline i'm just going to maybe use a longer leader a beefier leader i'll bump it up maybe from 20 to 25 possibly even 30 if i know the fish are right on top of those oysters and i'm jigging really close to them because yes the moment that you get a nick in those those leaders you're compromising it basically that redfish is going to pull opportunity for it to break off um so yeah i'll beef up the leaders if i am fishing around oysters uh, which is a great structure for fall uh but i would say yeah I'm, I'm generally keeping the same tackle that i do for uh for summer cool awesome anything else you think of in terms of these transitioning fish yeah i would say be on the lookout for any of these fish that are going to be schooling. That's that's just one of the big fall trends that I see with reds is, I, t I know I touched on it earlier, but schools are going to provide for your best days in fall. Um, it, and to think in that mentality, if you're not in an area where you're catching fish every 10, 15 minutes, you need to move. Fall is definitely one of those spot, uh, those times of year where the 90-10 rule is emphasized and you need to make sure that if you're not catching fish, you gotta move because it's they're, they're moving in schools. And if you're moving through an area with not a whole lot of action, you're not on one of those schools. And you'll know pretty much immediately when you are, it's, it'll be back to back cast. This video, this video right here, I had you know one point in the video where talking about you know how nice that was to catch that red and second the next cast I, I caught another one it's just moving through these schools and knowing that you need to kind of almost play minesweeper uh, as you're moving through flats or moving through marshes if you're not picking anything up continue to move don't stay in a spot where you're not catching anything uh, because for reds for sure uh, you're, you're going to be on one of these schools or you're not so just stay moving find the schools upsize your baits as we get later into fall uh, and you will be all right yeah and we'll have many more updates as this transition continues to occur but this is kind of one of the first times we're all seeing it richard and savannah why in texas us here we're like all right things are slowly starting to change so we wanted to make sure you were aware but of course if you're an insider member uh, you get a little bit more, uh, in, or a lot, whole lot more in-depth, and you get to see exactly where we're fishing. We show all of our spots, showing all the up-to-date real-time trends, and, of course, with smart fishing spots. That's how we found these spots, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you can you pull it up real quick. Do you have it on yeah. the desktop? Yeah. But uh, so when we had the content creators here, uh, Cameron went out with Sia Dude. They went out in the kayaks uh, one afternoon, 
and absolutely destroyed it. Came back uh, with a, a bunch of fish to eat because we were trying to feed nine full grown men. And, uh, and, and, and we did, and, uh, which was really, really cool. But they also released a ton of redfish and trout. And, and even C dude was like, man, he's like, I knew you guys had this from our fishing spots. Honestly, you know, I, I've been fishing my whole life. I didn't think I needed it. And he's like, this is awesome. So they found this spot exclusively from smart fishing spots. And in particular, they were trying to optimize areas that had both seagrass and oyster beds. And they found a couple that weren't that far from this house that we're renting. And lo and behold, as we've been talking about, they were shallow. Uh, those guys put on Slam Shitty 2.0 on a weedless hook and caught a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. And then we've been going back to that area uh, and they've moved. Obviously, we talk about all the time. Fish have tails and no fences. They're moving all the time, but they didn't move that far. And so we went around a couple other little points, found other schools, found more 90 10 zones, and, uh, and have continued to really have it dialed in here these uh, past. Uh, past i guess two days really since they left but all those green spots if you're watching this there's just green spots peppered throughout this area that's all grass yeah i'm not going to pull up the smart spots because that's like that's that's hot spots right yep. there uh but th this is a good starting point and it's nice to know where the grass is where you can see you know you've got a big yeah oysters too yep uh big congregation of grass right here maybe a little scattered spot that doesn't have a whole lot there, there's there's you know, areas where the grass is present around other pieces of structure. And that's your biggest thing is maximize structure, structure, maximize fish. So yep. lots of really, really good stuff to see here on some art spots. Can't show it all, uh, but Members uh, only. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's definitely helping us get on fish right now. Yep. It's, it's really nice. So best news is it's completely complimentary to anyone who joins the Insider Club. So just one more reason to join. I know a lot of you listeners are already Insider members. Thank you guys so much. From the bottom of our hearts, it, it is you guys are the foundation of this whole company. We uh, we celebrate you every day. And if you're not a member, what the heck are you waiting on? Someone to grab you by the hand and show you where to fish? That's what we do. And we help you save money and we help you save time. Money from tackle discounts, time because we're showing you where to fish, right? And that's that's really the the secret is being able to hit the water with confidence to know exactly where you should go. Does it work every time? No, nothing works 100% of the time. But when you have a game plan and you have all your spots outlined, a, B, C, D, E, and F, you know, it's sometimes you got to go to plan B or C or D, but most people don't even have that, right? I mean, even us, when we first started fishing, we had plan A, and that was like, go back to the same spot from last time. And then we were like a lost kid at Disney. And uh, that's just not fun. Uh, it, you know, fishing is supposed to be fun. And we're trying to give you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more freedom, a little bit more control. So smart fishing spots, get it today. It is completely free and complimentary to anyone who joins the club. That's at saltstrong.com. Anything else should I mean? I think we hit it all. All right. Pat, you're ready to fish, aren't you? Yep, Tony. Tony's going to do some push-ups first, then he'll be ready. <laughs> all right, guys, appreciate you. Chat with you on the next episode. Peace, we out. Because fishing, it's in my soul. It was